and welcome to the Church of St. James at Bermondsey. I'll show you the information board here. St. James Church in Bermondsey is one of the area's most important buildings. <clears throat> it is a landmark visible from the River Thames and all major train lines running into London Bridge Station. For nearly 200 years it has been at the heart of the community. After the final de defeat of Napoleon at the Battle of Waterloo in 1815, Parliament passed a Church Building Act of 1818 which provided uh, £100,000 to build churches in the area of rapidly expanding populations across the country to help prevent the type of social upheaval that sparked the French Revolution. It was built between 1827 and 1829 by architect James Savage, a uh, Greek revival design. Built midway between the ancient parish churches of Bermondsey and Rotherhithe, St James was known as Bermondsey's new church. When the church opened, it featured a set of ten bells, which were later sold to St James Cathedral in Toronto, Canada. Its organ, built by James Bishop in 1829, is the most complete of its kind in the country and features a number of innovations that became standard in later organs. During the First World War, the churchyard was opened for vegetable gardens and the crypt as an air aid shelter. The church was badly damaged during the Second World War and the vicarage was destroyed in June 1944 by one of the first V1s to hit London. After the war, the church suffered further dilapidation and by 1961, unstable masonry forced its closure and possible demolition. However, local outcry and the invention, intervention sorry, of Sir John Betjeman and the Friends of Friendless Churches ensured its survival. Between 1963 and 1971, the church was partially refurbished. The organ was restored for the first time in decades by the firm that built it between 1988 and 1991 with the financial help of the parishioners, local residents and the London Docklands Development Corporation. More work was completed. This included a new roof, windows, repairs to the stone brickwork including the spire. Uh, restoration work continues to the structure and fabric and its interior at the building so that it can continue as a place of worship of God and in the service of the local community. Yes, it does. That's quite unusual for fountains. They normally turn them off now. 1886, in memory of Nathaniel Montfort. M-O-N-T-E-F-I-O-R-E, -E, Esquire, of whom it was truly written, he sought to do them maximum of, sought to do the maximum of good with the minimum of notoriety. This fountain has been erected by his wife, Emma Montfort. church is a beautiful one, it really is. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. been beautifully restored and we'll get some better views of its spire in a bit when we go around the side. Jesus said come to me and I will give you rest. Now I'll just pause you while we get a side view. 
There we are. That's its right side. And the spire has fairly recently been restored. And it's modelled on Wren's one from uh, St Stephen Woolbrook and required a separate Act of Parliament in 1834 to require extra funds to pay for this. It's a dragon. We'll have a look at it when we go around the other side in a minute. It's an interesting churchyard as well. There aren't a great deal of headstones, but the ones that are legible, we will cover. I'm not sure we'll walk around this side way. And get another side view of it. Now, now I'm actually closer to it and can actually see it from this side of the road. Do excuse my appalling eyesight. I mentioned a pub over there in one of my tours called the Georgian, which I mistook for the old justice. Well, it's neither of those things, it's the Gregorian. Got a big bird bath type thing there. I don't know whether that's a tomb bird bath. I have seen those before. Maybe a keen ornithologist. And you don't get the greatest view of this side, obviously, because of the trees. But you do get a slightly better view of the dragon. Now, you'll join me back round the front and we'll go in. Then after that there'll be a little mini churchyard tour. These here were originally gas lanterns and they are planning to restore them with electric light. There's one on each side. And the detail in them is lovely. Now you'll join me back here earlier and we'll pop into the church. And it's an impressive one, so we shall go in. Falling very lucky again this morning. Holy Trinity Church, that was a permission visit. See with Catholic churches they're not always comfortable with filming and, and stuff. In loving memories, those of us who are strewn in the church, I don't know, they're quite recent. To the glory of God and in memory of Robert Britton, Harold Hill, Gregory Benson, George Moore, Stanley Blake, Thomas Piper, Leonard Cornwall, Thomas Pigeon, Owen Giles and Herbert Talbot, members of the St James Church Bermondsey Young Men's Bible Class who gave their lives in the Great War of 1914 to 1918. Those who knew them, loved them. I will take um, separate photos of the memorials. Now up here is the way that you would go to the old galleries, which are above, but they are sectioned off, but very much original. This church hasn't really been interfered with. The Bermondsey Boer War Memorial.
there will of course be a photo for you to study separately. This church smells exactly as an old church should. That kind of fusty, dusty, musty smell. It's original pews. Oh, that's very impressive. That's appalling. Catch pool 162, Free Church Street, London. This is fun. Look, that's quite impressive. Presented by Samuel Henry Sterry, surgeon. Anno Domini M D C C C X L I to the glory of God and in loving memory of Emma Elizabeth, beloved wife of Albert Fuller and youngest daughter of John and Sarah Ann Porter of 155 Jamaica Road in this parish, who died at Johannesburg, South Africa, May the 1st, 1897, aged 24 years. This font cover was placed here as a last tribute of love by her sorrowing parents. Christ. And there are a couple of the old memorials still left in place. Mr. William Bodkin of Croydon Street. Who died in the 46th year of his age. Also Sarah died October the 20th, 1852. In the 77th year of her age, but they've given no year of death for him. I will go around and photograph those, of course. Hello, am I with you always? really been well cared for this church you can see
you look around is lovely. Whether that's original to the 1820s or not, I don't know. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this one. Now for historical images and there'll be a little mini churchyard tour for this one afterwards as well. Well, conveniently, our history was all covered for us in the intro to the tour. And that's the same with the upcoming churchyard tour from this church as well. So some historical images and a little bit more info that I've been able to glean. Here's the church newly opened in 1829. 1830, just one year after its consecration and opening. And you can see a couple of sailors on the left and a woman and a young child very fancily dressed on the right. Circa 1878 here, and obviously by this point its burial ground was no longer in use. You can see the dragon spire though at the top, I love that. 1905. And here's a great little image from inside the church. The Bermondsey Labour Party at a service at St James's Church in 1931. Canon Donaldson is at the pulpit. And this I absolutely love because our intro to the church, we stood with this street behind us. You can see the modern street. And this is a modern photo and an old photo superimposed on each other so you're seeing the the modern and the old here but from the original it's tommy still signing autographs in freen street bermondsey 1957 those houses would all be cleared away in slum clearances and a little bit of info that i've been able to glean you'll remember the font with its roman numerals for a year well, the MDCCCXLI is 1842, but the font was presented by Samuel Henry Sterry, a surgeon. And here is the man himself, Samuel Henry Sterry. And he's got a very kindly, open looking face, hasn't he? I like this image. And some information about the man himself. I'll pause for a little while on each page for you to read. Pause if you need to. Moving on to the next page now. Moving on, and one last look at that face, and you'll remember the monuments I covered when I went around of Mr. William John Bodkin of Croydon, Surrey, who died in the 46th year of his age, and I thought it was curious that no year of death was given, well a little quick check up of Mr. William John Bodkin throws up his will, the will of Mr. William John Bodkin, a tanner, so that's uh, someone that worked in leather, of Croydon, Surrey, and the will was proved on the 19th of February 1812, which will give a death time of a very late 1811 to very early 1812. And that concludes our tour of St. James at Bermondsey. Our next one will be the churchyard tour. 
which unlike a lot of my churchyard tours actually has a quite cheerful element to it with the joy slide so the history of that and a little bit of original footage will be included in that one i thought it'd be nice to add a little bit of um joy through the joy slide to a churchyard tour which aren't always the most joyful of things let's admit so i hope you all enjoyed the tour of the church and join me for the next one which is the churchyard tour and after that we're off to the gregorian pub part pub part museum for a drink